All right, today we're going to be talking about rate of change and slope. They very much obviously go together, which is why we have them together here today. Um, so one of the ideas is doing rate of change to solve problems. The other one is you're going to do slope of a line. Now we are going to start with slope of a line first and then come back to this rate of change. All right, slope of a line. So we do draw on some lines. Uh, we did that last chapter. We made a table and went ahead and plotted the points and drew a line. Well, every line has a slope. The slope is the ratio of its how much it's going up, the rise, to how much is going over to the right or a run. So uh, people call it the rise over run. Now, we have a mathematical formula that goes ahead and f finds this for us. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. This M stands for slope, and M will always stand for slope and, uh, throughout this chapter as we're working through it. But if we have any two points, we can find how to get from one point to the other. So the slope is kind of like our directions to get to the next point. How do I get from here to there? Well, I'm going to go up four and then over five or whatever the values are. So the top, the numerator is the change in Y. The denominator is the change in X. So that is kind of a little bit backwards. The Y does go in the numerator and the X is in the denominator. But just understand that that's how, how it goes. Now, what do slopes look like? Well, slopes can be positive, negative, zero, or even undefined. We'll do some of these at the end here. But uh, let's talk about a positive slope. A positive slope means that we are going up and then over, uh, maybe two thirds. So we go up two and then over three. A negative slope would be like a negative two thirds. So we go down two and over three. Notice we always go to the right three, right however many. Uh, but a negative slope is a downhill sloping line. So if I have a negative three fourths, it goes down three and then over four. A slope of zero is a horizontal line. These are our two specialty lines. We kind of talked about them when we were graphing last, uh, last chapter. But so a slope of zero or zero over a number is a horizontal line. An undefined slope is a number over zero. So they're kind of exactly opposites of each other. So this would be like zero over two, and this might be seven over zero. So there is a difference obviously between those two. We can't get them confused. They are very different lines, but uh, that's where when we start getting these zeros, that's what's going to go on. The slope of zero is the horizontal, the undefined is vertical. All right, let's try a couple of these. All right, so let's start with a positive slope. Here's two points, negative three comma two and five comma five. So I'm gonna go ahead and the negative three two is our x1 and y1, again, alphabetical order. And then the fives is our x2 and y2. And we're gonna use our formula here, that rise over run formula y2 minus y1 notice they are minuses so we will get these double negatives sometimes that's just kind of how it works so y2 is 5 minus 2 so this 5 minus this 2 and then in the denominator we have 5 and negative 3 so 5 minus a negative 3 so notice that's that double negative 5 minus 2 is 3 5 minus a negative 3 is 8 so what does it mean? To go from this point to that one, I'm gonna go up three and over eight. Okay, that's just directions. And notice it is positive, so we, I am going up three and then over eight. All right, what about a negative one? So we have negative three, negative four, and negative two, negative eight. Again, we set them up as x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. So numerator is gonna be negative eight minus negative four negative eight minus negative four. Denominator will be the x's. Negative two minus negative three. Negative two minus negative three. Notice again the double negatives here. So this becomes negative eight plus four and negative two plus three. Well, negative eight plus four is still negative four and negative two plus three is one. So that's negative four over one or you can write it as negative four. I would take either of these two answers. They're both fine. But notice it's a negative. So what does that mean? It means we're going to go down four and then over one. So to get from that point to that one, we're going to go down four spots and then over one. That's how we go ahead and do that. So if you want to write it as negative four or negative four over one, both are acceptable. 
All right, here's that zero slope. Notice what happens here. We're going to set it up the same way, but notice what happens in the numerator here. It's 4 minus 4. Denominator is 4, and then again, plus 3, so that's going to be a 7 down here. But that 4 minus 4 is going to give me a 0. We have 0 over 7, or you can just write it as 0. This is the horizontal line. It goes up none and over 7 to get to the next point. So the slope is 0. And then here's the undefined one. Setting up the same. Numerator is 3 minus a negative 4. Denominator is negative 2 minus a negative 2. Notice when we have minus the same thing, we're going to get that 0. Here we get 7 over 0. That means we're going to go up 7 and over none. But of course, you know we can't divide by 0. So that's why it's considered undefined. So those are the three, four different types that we, we saw. And you can get any of those types. Mostly they're going to be the first two, either positive slope or negative slope. But do understand that the other two are possibilities. Now I said we also need to deal with rate of change. Well, rate of change is actually pretty easy. Rate of change is just a real world slope problem. Now notice what happened here. They gave us three ordered pairs. Pick two of them. You only have to use two of them. So each time we're increasing by 2 and, and 7. Sorry about that. So you're just going to go ahead and subtract. 152 divided by 76, or subtract 76, is 76. And the 4 minus 2 is just 2. So we have 76 over 2, which you, we should just reduce uh, to... Um, I'm sorry, 38 to 38 uh, miles per hour. Now, rate of change, we like to go ahead and put a label on it, and that's the big difference. But other words, otherwise, we are doing just the same problem. Uh, we're not doing this problem. I don't know why I left it in there. Oh, well, here's that rate of change that I was just talking about. 152 minus 76 over 4 minus 2. 76 over 2, or 38 over 1, which is 38 miles per hour. I don't know what I put that other slide in there for. Sorry about that. All right, and that's what I have for you.